This is a 2019 Volkswagen Arteon, and it is the newest Volkswagen. Now, in today's world of SUVs and more SUVs and more SUVs, you would think that the newest Volkswagen would be an SUV, especially because Volkswagen only sells two SUVs compared to Toyota, which sells six. But the newest Volkswagen isn't an SUV. Instead, it's this. I've borrowed this Arteon from Volkswagen South Coast, which is a Volkswagen dealership here in Orange County in Southern California. Volkswagen South Coast obviously has all of the new Volkswagen models, now including the Arteon, which is finally going on sale here in North America after a lot of delays. So let me give you a little overview of the Arteon. Now, back in 2009, Volkswagen came out with the CC, which was like a sporty, fun-looking version of the regular Passat mid-size sedan and it was cool and it sold pretty well at first but eventually sales started to taper off and we all kind of thought Volkswagen would move on when they canceled the CC after the 2017 model year and they would just focus more on SUVs and crossovers but they didn't instead they gave us the Arteon which I'll admit looks really nice gorgeous in fact sort of like a budget version of the Audi A7 or A5 still it surprises me that in today's market, Volkswagen wouldn't want to develop an SUV instead because, like I said, Toyota has six, Volkswagen has two. In fact, it's always kind of surprised me that Volkswagen spends so much money and time developing niche products like the Arteon, the CC, the EOS, the new Beetle, instead of things that will make more money and bring more sales. But that's what they do, apparently. So anyway, the Arteon. Now, it starts from around $36,000, and this well-equipped R-Line model is around $48,000, which is big money for a sedan that doesn't come from a luxury brand. They're only offering one engine here in North America. It's a 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder with 270 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. And today, I'm going to review it. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of this car and show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the Arteon, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've rounded up a list of the weirdest Volkswagen production models from the last few decades. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Arteon in the front, and I'm going to start with the sunroof, and specifically the fact that the sunroof opens independently of the sunroof cover, which means that you can open the sunroof but keep the sunroof cover closed, which is a very odd thing. I've only seen this on Volkswagen and Audi models. The first time I saw it, I thought it was really weird, but over time I've thought about it and I could actually see this being useful. If you want some wind to come in, but maybe you block yourself out from the sun, you have the ability here. You can open the sunroof and keep the cover closed or vice versa in the Arteon. Now, next up, here's another interesting one. On the dashboard, you can see that there is a giant climate control vent on the passenger side going from the middle all the way over to the side of the car except if you look closely you will see it is not a climate control vent it's just a dummy there's a vent in the middle there's another vent on the side and then in between there's nothing no air comes out of there now I've noticed this is becoming a popular trend in the car business to put like a dummy climate control vent on the entire dashboard to make everything look better and that way you don't have to have these vents poking out instead it's all just one sweet line. I'm surprised to see this as an emerging trend in car design, but I'm seeing it in a lot of new models. Next up, another interesting item in this interior. Like I mentioned, this particular Arteon is loaded. It's like $48,000 and it has everything. It has a lot of technology, automated parking, various different features. It's really well equipped. And yet, you go down to the gear lever area and you can see there are five blank switches around the gear lever. You pay all this money for the Arteon the flagship version of the flagship sedan in VW's lineup, and you get all of these blank switches. It's kind of a shame.
screen. And the especially unusual part is if you look above the infotainment screen, there's a row of switches up there that don't really fit in. They could have moved those switches down around the gear lever and then you wouldn't have any blanks and you would have sort of a more standard dashboard that isn't interrupted by switches in the middle. But for some reason, they chose to move those up there and give you blanks. A strange decision from Volkswagen. And next up, another interesting item in the vicinity of all this stuff is right on the dashboard, right in the middle, you have an analog clock. Ah, yes, the mark of a true luxury car, the analog clock. Folks, why are we still doing this? <laughs> this analog clock is three inches above the digital clock in the infotainment screen, which is what you're actually gonna look at if you wanna know what time it is. And there's also a clock in the gauge cluster right in your line of sight. So why do we still bother with these stupid analog clocks as if they signify luxury? No one's ever gonna use them, but you must have them in an expensive car. I think it's ridiculous, but automakers don't seem to, and they keep sticking them in there even though they're obviously Obviously redundant. Now next up we move on to the infotainment system and this car has some interesting quirks and features in there starting with one of my very favorites which is that it senses the presence of your hand. Not when you touch it but if you move your hand close to the screen you'll notice some items kind of add more information when your hand gets there to show you what you might be pressing. And then when you take your hand away, those items kind of decrease what they're showing to give you a cleaner look in the screen. You bring your hand back and again, they sense you. I think this is really cool. It almost feels like magic. You get your hand near the screen and it's like, oh, hello. I'm gonna tell you what these buttons do that you might be about to press. But then you pull your hand away and it's like, ah, oh, now we go back to stealth mode. <laughs> Next up, one other cool thing about the infotainment system, before I go into its quirks and features, I love the fact that it does flips when it's switching between certain screens. Now, I know this is a gimmick and I shouldn't like it because they stuck it in there just to try to get me, but they have won, and it just makes the whole thing seem nicer and more fun and more exciting than it actually is. And next we move on to some of the interesting quirks and features of the infotainment system, starting with the Think Blue Trainer. This is one of the things that comes up if you press the car button and what it does is it reminds you to drive efficiently which Volkswagen for some reason calls think blue it actually gives you a score that rates how efficiently you're driving over on the left on the right it shows your current fuel economy and in the middle there's some sort of circle thing with lines and I guess that also rates your efficient driving but you can keep that screen up if you want to try for like a personal best in driving efficiency. And next up on the subject of efficiency, another interesting feature of the infotainment system is this energy consumers page, which actually shows you what car systems are consuming additional energy and thus robbing you of fuel economy. And you can see right here, it shows that the climate control is consuming energy and it even shows me how many gallons per hour the climate control system is currently using. Now, if I go down and turn off the climate control system, you see this goes away and there is no like auxiliary energy consumer. But if I go back and turn the climate control back on, again, this pops up and lets me know, hey, if you want to maximize your driving potential on each tank of fuel, you'll want to turn off your climate control, and here's how much it's costing you. Pretty cool. Next up, another lovely quirk of the infotainment system, something I will always love about Volkswagen infotainment systems. You can not only adjust the volume of the parking sensors, but also the pitch, basically the tone that plays when you have the parking sensors on, and when you adjust it, you can play a little song. Listen to mine. One other cool idea in this infotainment system, it has a feature called max startup volume. So if someone was out driving your Ardeon and they had the radio turn all the way up, they were having a good time and then they turned it off, when you get in the car the next morning to drive to work, it won't blast the radio. Instead, you can set the maximum volume that the radio will play at startup so you're not like startled when you first turn on the car. That is a pretty good idea. And next we move on to the camera system in the Ardeon, which is quite advanced. You can see when you press the camera button, you have a top-down 360 degree camera view, which is always nice to see, very helpful for parking in tight spaces. And you can zoom in on various different angles in that top-down camera to get a closer view on like the sides if you're parallel parking or whatever. Now, one interesting camera situation with the Ardeon is that there's a towing hitch camera. 
If you press this little button, which clearly shows you like backing in to tow something, it will show a top down view from the back so you can easily line up your Ardeon with a trailer <laughs> in case you want to tow something. That may be something that Europeans do. They often tow with cars, but in America, I suspect most people won't be towing with their Ardeon. Now it's worth noting, you have the same camera in front, like a top down front camera, and that is just really, really useful because like if you're pulling up to a parking curb and you don't want to run over it because you're worried about damaging the car, you can turn that on and it shows exactly where you are. Now, next we move on to the gauge cluster, which in the Ardeon is a full screen and it is pretty good and pretty configurable, especially the center part. You can have it show your speed, your trip details, all sorts of different things in the middle. Now, unfortunately to the sides, the tachometer and the speedometer are fixed in place. And I don't love fixed dials on a screen because to me it kind of defeats the purpose of having a screen, but nonetheless they are fixed. However, you can change what's in the middle of the speedometer and tachometer dials, and you can choose between various different things here. It can show safety systems, navigation, it can show your current gear and your drive mode. Various different things can go in the middle there. So this gauge cluster screen is reasonably configurable, not as much as like Audi or Mercedes-Benz, but still pretty good. Now next we move on to the back seat of the Ardeon and I will say in terms of interior room back here it is pretty good. First off there are three seats. A lot of these like coupe sedan things will eliminate the middle seat but not this car so it's still pretty practical and there's a surprising amount of interior space here. The passenger seat is pretty far back. I have decent room and I also have good headroom which you might not expect considering this is one of those slopey back sedan coupes but I fit in here just fine without having to bend over like in some of these cars. Now, one interesting item in the back seat, like I mentioned, this is a very well-equipped version of the Ardeon and it has a lot of stuff back here. You have your own rear seat climate zone so you can change the temperature, whatever you want. You have heated rear seats back here, but you do not have a USB port for charging. You do have a little 12 volt cigarette lighter style power outlet back here, but no USB, no USB-C, which is now becoming common standard fare in luxury cars. Surprising not to see that in this. I will say though, in the middle, you drop down this armrest and you have three cup holders, two for normal cups and one for small cups. So they have you covered there. Now, next up, we move on to the outside of the Ardeon, and I have to say, this is my very favorite thing about this car, the look. This is a really nice looking car, and that is the intent. It looks cooler than the Passat, and that's what's supposed to make you pay more than a Passat because it just has this nice upscale look to it. In fact, I think this kind of looks like an Audi A5 Sportback. It has all the same proportions, all the same lines, except this car has an $8,000 cheaper base price. Now, is the Audi brand name worth that $8,000? That'll be up to the people who are trying to buy these, but this is a very nice looking car in Volkswagen showrooms. And it isn't just the styling of the A5 Sportback that the Ardeon mimics, it also has another big benefit, and that would be that it's a hatchback. Now the Volkswagen CC, this car's predecessor, was not a hatchback, but this one is like the A5 Sportback is, and that obviously makes it more practical than a typical sedan, whereas these coupe hatch sedan things are usually less practical. In this one, you have a larger cargo area than a typical sedan, and you can put down the seats for even more cargo space, so you can stick a lot of really big stuff back here. And since we're around back, I wanna talk about one of my very favorite quirks and features of modern Volkswagen models. Now, I just opened the rear hatch with the key, but you can also do it back here. But if you look around, you don't see a latch to open it. Well, that's because it's hidden in the Volkswagen logo. Check this out, you push it and then it pops open. The Volkswagen logo doubles as a rear hatch and it actually has a third purpose too because with the hatch down, you can see there's no immediately obvious place where you see a backup camera back here. When you stick this car in reverse, the logo swivels out and it has a backup camera underneath and that's where the backup camera is. Put it back into drive and the logo goes back to its normal position and you would never know that it contains both the backup camera and the trunk lid. 
That's a pretty cool little quirk. And another quirk of the Ardeon, you get into the cargo area and you will see this mat over the cargo area floor. Volkswagen calls this the cargo protection system, but it's better than that. It's actually the car go protection system. You get it because it's a car and it goes, but it's also your cargo. <laughs> <laughs> what a little jokester Volkswagen is. That, however, is not as good as this. This little silver plate is designed to protect your bumper. And instead of just calling it a silver bumper plate protector, Volkswagen calls this the bumper dillo protection system. Like armadillo, but for your bumper, the bumper dillo. <laughs> I am not kidding. This is printed on the window sticker bumper dillo. Next, we move into the engine compartment, but before we talk about the engine, I want to talk about opening the hood. Now, you do it in the normal way. You pull a little latch in the driver's footwell, then you come up here to the front, there's another latch you have to pull, and then the hood opens. But look at this area around the front latch. Tell me that is not a face. Look at this. There's two little screws, those are the eyes, and then the latch is the nose, and then they put this little smile on here. This does not have to be here, but I think someone at Volkswagen was like, this little line we can turn into a smile and then this looks like a face. That's the only reason why they would put that little half circle there to complete this and make it look like a smile. They did this just... You don't care about this, do you? No. Uh, anyway, moving on to the engine. Like I mentioned before, this is a two-liter turbo four-cylinder, 270 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. And I think that is sort of the definition of fine. I think that's about as much power as you could put in this car, and it would be totally adequate, maybe a little more than adequate. But for a flagship vehicle like this, this is Volkswagen's most expensive sedan, I would think there would be a higher-end engine option. But for now, this four-cylinder is what we get. Now, one interesting thing under the hood, I mentioned earlier that Volkswagen canceled this car's predecessor, the CC, after sales kind of declined. Nobody was really buying it anymore. Interest had dried up. But look over on this fluid reservoir, and you could see it's says CC with the little CC logo. I'm not sure if maybe it's the same part or if Volkswagen was thinking they would call this car the CC again and then they didn't. But either way, its name made its way on to this fluid reservoir. And so those are the quirks and features of the Volkswagen Arteon. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the Arteon. Arteon, Arteon. I don't know. Now, it's worth noting right off the bat that this particular Arteon is all-wheel drive. It has Volkswagen's four motion. First impression when I climb into the Arteon, it is pretty nice in here. The interior is nice, uh, features, everything looks good. Um, I would say this is a pretty high quality interior. It just looks like a nice place to spend time. The screen area looks good. Everything is nice, save for those blank switches that I mentioned, but that's a really small thing. Um, it does have a high quality interior. And in fact, I think it has the type of interior you would want and in fact be thrilled with in a car that costs 35 to $45,000, which is where I think most of these will be. Step on the throttle here first. That acceleration is what I would call fine. I mean, it's quick, you know, it's quick enough, but it doesn't have a ton of muscle to it. Um, there's no question that you're kind of wanting more. There's enough, and not just adequate, but like more than adequate, but not necessarily fun or thrilling or exciting, which you would kind of want if you're going to spend this kind of money for a car. I think 320, 330 horsepower would be a great number for this car, but I suspect at that point they fear that they would be stepping on Audi's toes. I also think one of the problems with putting this engine in this car is, you know, a two liter turbo four cylinder, it's just so, it's so like economy car, base car or something like that. This is kind of the flagship Volkswagen vehicle now. Um, they have the Atlas, but that's an SUV. In terms of sedans, this is it. And $48,000, this is getting up there even compared to the Atlas. And I just think a flagship model shouldn't top out with a two liter turbo four cylinder. You know, you press the accelerator and it just, you just don't have that feel like this is a real luxury car, real powerful car, whatever. And I'm surprised Volkswagen wouldn't put something more powerful in this car, something bigger, something better, even a plug-in hybrid that just got it to a more powerful, more advanced, better level. In terms of comfort, everything is great. Ride quality is good. Um, seating position is nice for a sedan. Even though this car has one of those sloped roof kind of things, 
Uh, visibility is pretty good. Straight back, it, window could be a little bit bigger, but it's not a huge complaint. Obviously, there's a lot of you know tech systems around you that help too. Same deal with handling. As I steer around, it feels good. It's just not incredible. It's more precise than I was expecting, but not as precise as maybe you would want for $48,000 in the flagship Volkswagen. It's fine, it's good. Really, I think early on, it's very clear to see this car's sort of benefits and its drawbacks. The biggest benefit is unquestionably the look. Um, it really looks nice on the outside. I think it really looks nice on the inside, better than any other Volkswagen. It's a, it's a nice looking car. I think the tech is pretty good. The drawbacks are, you know, for Volkswagen's prestige model, the cool looking one that people will notice on the street, it doesn't have all that much power. Um, and it's pricey. I mean, $48,000 for a Volkswagen, you know, at a base price of 36, this is about 10,000 cheaper, 8,000 cheaper than an A5 Sportback. The problem is this is in A5 Sportback territory. And so that's the 2019 Volkswagen Arteon. This is a handsome sedan. And there is a group of people who will absolutely love this car, but it's a pretty small group. Someone who wants a mid-size sedan, but they don't want a normal mid-size sedan. And they want sort of a luxury, cool looking sedan, but they don't want it from a luxury brand. Still, if you're in that very small group, this is an excellent choice. But if I were Volkswagen, I probably would have just built another SUV instead. Anyway, with that, time to give the Ardeon a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Ardeon is handsome and it gets a 7 out of 10. Acceleration is fine, adequate, maybe a bit better, but not more. It does 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds and it gets a 4 out of 10. Handling is average and it gets a 4 out of 10. Fun factor is fairly low. It's quick enough and it looks cool, but it's not really that enjoyable to drive and it gets a 3 out of 10. Cool factor is a bit higher because it's the cool new Volkswagen and it gets a 4 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 22 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The Ardeon has a lot of great tech and it gets an 8 8 out of 10. Comfort is normal for the class and it gets a 7 out of 10. Quality is nice, it has a great interior and only a few blemishes and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is excellent with the hatchback design for extra storage space and it gets a 7 out of 10. Finally, value. This is a good car but 48 grand is a big ask for a Volkswagen and it gets a 5 out of 10 for a daily score of 34 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 56 out of 100 and here's where the Ardeon stacks up against some rivals including a few SUVs because I think people will probably cross shot them. The Ardeon is fine, good enough, but if you can stretch your budget a bit, I recommend the BMW 330i or a Tesla Model 3 or an Audi A5 or S5 Sportback instead. They're not much more money and you get a premium brand name. And in the case of the BMW and the Model 3, you get a more engaging driving experience. You spend all this money to get a really high-end Ardeon, which is sort of like the flagship Volkswagen sedan, and you have six blank switches around the gear lever. That's five switches, isn't it? Yeah, it's five. Next up, another interesting item in this interior.